wet. You need to do something before our supplies get soaked. Act fast, there's no time to waste. You need to cut off the piping with the main valve or temporarily dis- Okay, so we'll use intelligence on that. We'll also craft soup. Because we need soup. And we'll end the turn. We may need to heal baby. I don't know how close to death he is, I guess. We'll see what places are available to us for, um, yeah. Success, Captain. You were smart enough to disable the sprinkler system as soon as the flooding started. This gave you enough time to fix the sprinklers. I'm happy to report that our supplies are safe and the water reserves were not compromised. Uh, baby is in poor health. No longer insane. Rested. Now alert. Baby is hungry. So we still have the armor. So what do we have here? Uh, I don't know what eclipse means. Uh, that's a fair length of time, though. That's something we really don't need, particularly. That is also something we... Okay, so let's go to here. With Baby. Yeah. Uh, we'll give him the armor. What's that? It's an eclipse, I guess? I don't know what we'd need for that, though. Let's give him the shovel. Maybe the shovel increases, and we're also going to heal him before he goes. Okay, so we can't craft anything. We've got power now, so I guess we'll upgrade the atomic battery first. Uh, the shuttle is in danger, Captain. We're on the path of a vicious gale of nasty chemical composition, which is threatening to sabotage our air filters. They need to be protected by a lost remote control due to the micro damage from the winds. They have to be closed manually. Toxic. Okay, so we should be able to to fix that. Uh, go. Cool, 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 cool. We're still going fine. This, I may have to cut up this video. As much as I'd like to give you a whole freaking long, long video, I'm, you yeah, know, I'm hesitant. Uh, that was a close one, Captain. It's a good thing you had the proper gear to get out of there and manually close our air filters. Even with your mask, braving the toxic winds wasn't something you'd like to do ever again. The shuttle will get a bit stuffy before I have the chance to filter out in any fresh air, but it'll it be suffocating to death. Once the winds pass over us, we'll reopen the filters and things will return back to normal. You did all you could to fix a robotic animal, but both your tool selection and technological know-how were limited. If you're set on mending this sad pile of scrap vaguely reminiscent of a dog, you'll have to gather some actual parts from around the planet. My advice is take a good look at the map and consider what you've already explored. I'm sure robot parts are easy enough to get a hold of around here, but some locations are certainly more promising than others, such as the graveyard or the museum. Uh, it's, okay. That's gonna be a while before we can... Maybe we recycle something? Like, we, we'd get 20 um, chemicals just from recycling this. And we haven't used it, really. Which worries me, because it means we may have to use it, but... You know what? I am going to uh, recycle this. It's a terrible idea, but I'm going to do it. Uh, a travelling robot carnival set up shop outside. Uh, wait, did we do this? There are a few items in a gambling tent you could use, Captain. I've calculated the odds, and it's worth trying. Normally, I'd be get against such a brief of Astro Citizen Ethics Guidelines, but we don't have many options, and you're super, super smart. Yeah, I am. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm okay with this. I think. It's the Kansas City Shuffle. Uh, you visited the Robot Carnival's gambling tent where you, where you tried the open circuit credit card game. Card game. Uh, despite being totally new, you picked it up quickly and ended up cleaning house. When it was time to cash in, the mustachio robot dealer took your chips and went back to the tent to fetch your prize. Dealer returned moments later, apologizing that he'd given away the last prize to the player before you. He offered to double your prize if you pay, play and win again next century when the carnival returns. There seems to be a lot of fuck you moments in this game, which actually are starting to annoy me. Captain, our systems are working below their optimal levels. I was able to determine that our wiring might be at fault. I suggest you take a look under the proverbial hood and fix the wires before a malfunction occurs. The wires are stuffed in a dark corner, tangled and dusty. 
You'll have to figure out how to fix this by yourself. I trust your instincts, not that you have a choice. Yes, I will fix it with intelligence. Yeah, um, honestly, like, the the tendency to get events... I, and I think I understand the reasoning and thought behind this. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, yeah, let's go to the next turn. I, I... No, I didn't craft. Wait, did I craft? No, I didn't craft. God damn it. Sheepy, you asshole. Nicely get done, Captain. You proved yourself smart enough to fix the malfunctioning component. The ship's systems are now working at standard capacity. The ship is really falling apart, I'm afraid. There's not enough time to properly finish it. Who could have expected? Uh, but no one listens to me. Uh, to, uh, you're starving. Serving of soup. Yes, give me soup. We'll also craft soup. A family of robotic nomads set up camp nearby. Captain, their elder wants to meet you. My scan shows they don't have any weapons or even sharp sticks. How do you approach them? Agility. Strength seems like the wrong way to go. Um, yeah, so the, the problem I'm facing here is like some of them where there's where something goes wrong, that's all right because you're tr like fixing something that goes wrong. But there's so there's so many instances where it's like, hey, um, you've got like you've got like something where you have to uh, you have to you're gonna win a prize and then every time it's like prize not won. It just it just feels a little bit annoying because. When you're low on resources and stuff, you're, like, hopeful that an event is going to give you something to help. And then you don't, like, you know, probably seven times out of ten. I would say you don't get something to help. So we need to explore locations. Uh, of course. Uh, something seems to be troubling you, Captain. I've registered staring out the window. La, la, la. Did you? Yeah, I, I just, I can't do anything else there. Um, we'll make more soup, please. Because baby's going to be coming back, and he's going to be needing food. And we're also going to be needing food. That's right, Captain. Keep your emotions in check and develop un unhealthy coping mechanisms. That should keep you standing. Remember, you can always talk to me when I have a good day and when I'm not running calculations. Apart from that, any time. Just let me know 24 hours in advance. Baby returned from his library excursion, quite exhausted, quite exhausted, probably from all the heavy reading. He complains about a rumbling stomach. I judge his mental state to be a little off. Baby says the library is a little boring, but nevertheless impressive. Centuries, if not millennia, of knowledge organized and stored neatly on data disks. Perfection. Baby slipped on some data disks and stumbled in a pitch back room. He fell a, a few times and banged his head pretty hard while finding his way back to the main corridor. Baby's shovel was confiscated, frightening the library. He was handed a few shiny rocks as a security deposit, but forgot to give them back. Oops. Baby did learn something useful during this trip. When he came back, he pointed out a few things around the shuttle that we could repurpose for crafting. The trip has potential to uncover technology the Astro Citizen creators could only dream of, if only the human one mind wasn't so limited. Baby is not still out on a... So he's starving and tired, so we'll give him food. We'll also craft another soup. Okay, we're all right. Uh, Captain Ellis, a pair of robots are meandering. Oh yeah, that's our name. Are meandering towards us. They are facing each other and appear to be fused at the hands. One is a larger Hulk, dragging the other, which is smaller in stature. Could this be a parent-child pair? The big droid thuds along one leg after the other, as if low on power, while the little one peters fumes from his back. One has a power socket and the other a mouth-like receiving chamber. Do you wish to charge the big robot, feed the little one, or leave them to their fate? We will use the atomic battery to charge him. Hopefully it will just downgrade our guy and won't totally screw us. Yes, let's make more, make more soup. So after baby's rested, I think we can send him back out. Uh, you lugged a battery over to the Robo Rent and Robo Kid. I keep thinking Rent is in like you know I I'd like to rent that for a day. Uh, who are slowly trudging past the shuttle. Once you plug the unit into the father bot, he straightens his back and sprung with energy. The hulking machine bowed in thanks with renewed energy. Picked up the weak little robot next to it and sprinted it into the distance. I hope their journey isn't just one of those fatherly character building exercises. Okay, baby's rested and is hungry, but that's fine. So what do we have here? Robot statue, the museum. We should probably go to the museum. Or the graveyard. Energy lighter. 
Let's send baby to there. It's actually not that much of a length of time, weirdly, because it seems to be further away. Uh, so maybe we'll send him with the... <coughs> it's a graveyard. Send him with the shovel and... I don't know. It says it's got like an occult look or something there. We could just send him with food. Like so he could eat, but... I'll just send him with a shovel and hopefully he doesn't get hurt too much. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Someone left a board outside your door, Robu Munji. Hey look, the pieces are little robot explorers. Cute, but this is weird. I'm reading a vast energy signature emanating from the game board. Wow, I've never seen anything like this. My calculations are showing. No, that can't be right. The gem in the middle of the game board contains a micro universe. Be careful, Captain. Do you want to play? No. See, I've I've done quite a few of these events now, and I know that in my experience at least, that one's bad. So we would prefer not to do that one. Did I do crafting? I think I did crafting. You did not play I didn't do crafting. Uh, you did not play Robumanji, a board game containing mysterious micro-universe? Yeah, I'm sure that'll end well, you muttered, and tossed the box back outside. But it wasn't any ordinary board game, Captain. It contained advanced technology with the power to alter reality. The game chooses the players, and refusing it has a cost, as does failing its trials. So, we lost 20... We still got a whole load of that, so that's, that's actually fine. We're gonna craft that, we're gonna feed ourselves... Uh, our water recycler is overheating. The overheating itself isn't the problem. The systems has safeguards. The problem is we store our minerals under the water recycler. I'm worried that any minerals there, even leftover traces, could melt or boil if exposed to too much heat. That could be hazardous. A manual reset could work, but it would be tough. Sure. Sure. We're crafting, right? Yeah, we're crafting food. Okay. Day 50. You opted to manu manually reset the overheating water recycler. Job was harder than you expected. Oh, crap. Okay, so... Specifically warns against not releasing any steam jets during such repairs. Steam jets you let loose vaporize some of the exposed minerals stored next to recycler. You're lucky they didn't recy uh, recycle vaporize you two. Not recycle. So we got three rock now, which is a bit of a shame, but mm, what, what are you going to do? Uh, we could recycle something, but I don't think we need to. Could upgrade a few things. The armor, for one, would be something worth upgrading, maybe. Uh, the lighter or the tape. Nothing to repair. We got three cans of soup. That's pretty good. I think we make the first aid kit. As annoying as it is that it uses the same thing as food and it takes ages, I think it's worthwhile to survive. Oh, look at that. Uh, have you looked in the mirror recently, Captain? I couldn't help but notice you seem to be afflicted. Okay, so that's a rash. Same thing as same thing as again, like you get sick and then problems happen and etc. etc. Um We will be okay. Because the handbook protects against these sorts of things. Hello there, Captain. You're looking very rested today. I can see that you found a way to deal with that mysterious rash that was bothering you earlier. You could figure out what the cause was, but at least you found instructions on how to treat it in your Astro Citizen Handbook. You... it didn't have a name, so you gave it one. The, uh, 5TO... Uh, 5T000P1D, uh, R45H Affliction. How thoughtful of you. The stupid rash. Yeah. Stupid. Someone is watching, Captain. Uh, they do it regularly, whoever they are. So we tried to fix the robotic animal again, but we can't. My advice is to take a good look. Uh, graveyard or museum. We've gone to the graveyard with the shovel, so yeah. Uh, received a pamphlet on our window. Try eBoson, universal shopping from the comfort of your own planet. Free gift with a sign up. Wow, neat. The eBoson network lets you order pretty much every, anything except food and water and will arrive via portal within one to two galactic business days. Incidentally, guys, the funny one about this one, uh, and I say this with a growing uh, annoyance, is that one to two galactic business days, like a galactic business day is like a hundred years or something, I think. There's a catch though. The account cre creation process requires you to jump through some hoops. I mean, literally. 
you have to leap through a string of temporal portals to become verified. So we're going to use uh, agility for this, and we should we should succeed it because our agility is like perfect apparently. Da, 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 da. Ah, baby's back. You touched the floor and quickly sprinted through the boson sign-up portal, disappearing into the dimensional breach with a flash of blue lightning. The shuttle rocked and you popped out the other side of the portal unharmed. The fine print of the pamphlet uh, expanded to show that it would take one to two galactic business days for your verification to process, at which time you could begin your universal shopping experience. The pamphlet then expanded to define uh, one galactic day business day as five... yeah. Sorry, it's a thousand Earth years. Finally, the pamphlet scanned the shuttle to see if you qualified for the promised free gift and determined you did not. When you asked why not, the pamphlet said you had violated the terms of service, but refused to explain further. Then it vanished in a cloud of annoying paradoxes. Baby Sai revived the exp expedition to the graveyard. He appears a bit weakened, famished, and a bit unnerved. Baby swears the place was haunted or something. He got scared by some distant crying-like sounds and stumbled over his own feet several times, falling upon sharp objects. Ba baby shoveled uh, bravely through the garbage and robotic bodies and gathered some resources. Nice, I'm glad I took the shovel. Baby picked up a bunch of small mechanisms. Okay. Uh, went swimming in endless piles of junk around the graveyard, but found nothing looking like it would belong on a robotic dog. He's about to give up and return to the ship when something caught his eye, a partially dissembled robot, laid against a rock with unfamiliar inscriptions on it. It's clear the robot had been deactivated for years or maybe centuries. Baby didn't think anyone would mind if he took a few spare parts from here or there. Baby acquired the elements he wanted, but the whole ordeal was just morbid. Please, Astro citizens, have some respect for the deactivated. Uh, the graveyard um, is is a bit unsettling. The robots don't bury their deactivated companions, they just throw them on top of the nearest pile. Baby claims he also saw a broken tank-like machine covered by other debris. Looks like it's been centuries since the last military conflict here. Okay, so he's hungry, but he's not starving. He's uh, weak, which means he could use some healing, maybe. We'll see how that goes. I asked one of the locals about their customs. I had some, had some ideas for explaining their culture to you. Pick something, Captain, and I'll share my newly acquired knowledge using that item as a focus point. I'm going to use soup, because if they can like improve our food or something, that'd be great. I hope we don't lose the food. Wait, crafting. Oh, yeah, one more day for that. Okay. Day 53 in the... What the fuck? I'll explain this planet's customs using a can of soup. Could you hand me one, baby? I'll demonstrate Popper Creator, a local game. Oops, squeed it too hard. Lost soup. Pieces of shrapnel exploded everywhere, but you managed to avoid most of it and only got a few scratches. Sorry about that, Captain. Uh, so, what the fu- how did Baby die? Uh. That means we can't go exploring anymore. Uh, really? Nothing to repair. We're gonna have to scavenge stuff. I mean, we can't even use the expedition anymore, so that's kind of air. We will upgrade this, I guess. And an alien vessel is approaching. Their ship is rigged with a light show synced to the music. They started blasting as soon as we opened comms. I guess he got killed by the explosion. Which is really un unfortunate. I guess I should have used something else. So those robots just murdered uh, Baby. Uh, the aliens claim to be of the Dance Lord tribe and are searching for the best dancers in the galaxy. They've challenged our tribe to a dance-off. Okay, so we're going to use agility, which is really dumb. Like, it's a group thing, but everyone in my group's dead. So it, the agility should be really good because I have good agility. I don't understand that one. You accept the dancer's challenge, but you lost the dance-off. They beamed at you as you stumbled off. Dance Lords, any honor anyone. Uh, their leader, Warbop, spared you, but warned you better have sweeter moves next time. Uh, okay, we should eat something. Pretty sure we can craft the soup. Sir, something is seeping into the shuffle. Looks like a trickle of iron fillings. 
Filings. Could it be nano machines outside the shuttle? Track of bright, vital flowers, clean soil lead away into the distance. The nano machines are pouring in and pulling on the floor, sliding in various directions. Shall I continue letting them in? Yes. Let's say yes to this one. Because if there's, if maybe they are like making like food in, in essence, I guess. That's my hope. If we can get some soup out of this, it would be lovely. Somehow I doubt it's going to go that way, but it would be lovely. Day 55, we're not doing too badly. Oh, God. The flood of nano machines entering the cabin was becoming a torrent, pulling around an empty seat. You decided to wait and see what they do. They began pulsing up into a huge shimmering mound that became taking the shape of a human. After a few moments, they began sloughing away, and in their place was a new crewmate, Tom Thompson. While we're all a little suspicious of this nano-cloned human, they seem entirely cogent and are willing to help. Another pair of hands, but another mouth to feed. Tom! Hey, buddy! Alright, Captain, I'm glad to say I took care of attaching the parts you collected for our robotic dog in all the right places while you were asleep. Do not take it personally, I've been observing your struggle with this machinery over the past few nights. However, this kind of delicate work requires a robotic touch. Humans can be so clumsy. If you want to see this robot up and running one day, the next reasonable course of action would be to charge its battery, unless you wish to give up on the project. My offer of installing Robotic Dog as a doorstopper still stands. Your choice. We'll use the atomic battery. We'll also craft... I guess we could craft that? Maybe upgrade something? Uh, we'll upgrade the expedition system. Yeah. Oh, we're upgrading it. Okay, well, next turn then. So we got Tom, so we can do expeditions again, which is good. You attach the battery to the mecha dog, some sort of light started blinking, so that's a good sign. You should stop staring at it so intently, Captain. This won't happen overnight. The robot will probably need a few days to charge up fully, just give it some time. Because of course, everyone knows that. Can you hear that, Captain? It sounds like mosquitoes. It is mosquitoes. See, there's one. Get it. No wait, these aren't ordinary insects, they're robot constructions. Extraordinary. They're almost as annoying as the real thing, but at least they don't seem to be sucking blood. We should probably get rid of them anyway, just in case they take an interest in you, Captain. We'll use the armor, because I have used the communicator before, and it didn't work super well. Next turn. Ba -ba -ba. You found a way to deal with the swarm of robotic mosquitoes that barged onto our shuttle. You donned your armor, provoked them to attack you, and with a dull, repetitive pinging, one by one the insects broke their pointy mouths. Battered, and probably quite frustrated, they left the shuttle. None have been seen, spotted since. They must have sent a signal to other mosquitoes to avoid this area. Good riddance. You are starving, you should eat something. I will eat something. Uh, recycling something is probably a good idea. Probably the tape, I guess? Or the shovel? Because I think the shovel takes rocks to make. So... But it takes time to make as well. I don't think there's anything else here that I feel comfortable. Yeah, so let's re recycle the shovel. Uh, Captain, an old previous dormant satellite on the planet's orbit has suddenly activated and is transmitting. The message is coded with a cipher uh, the robots around here don't use. It has to be aliens. The transmission says, are you a robot? That's all. Uh, that's all it says, over and over. Well, I, how can I respond? They're taunting me. Captain, you need to deal with this somehow. Prove to them we're not robots. You're not. Are you? So we will use intelligence. Hey there, Tom. How you doing? We can send Tom off to places. So, the hazard there is Cthulhu? Maybe? Uh, robot statue takes a turn. Uh, charging hub. Not terrible. The museum. Yeah, so let's send him to there because it only doesn't take too long. And there are good things. Uh, there's uh, chemicals there which we will need. Uh, we will give him the gun, the armor, yeah, the gun and the armor, okay. Because we're obviously going to have to fight something there. 
Uh, you need to eat, sir. Our shovel is also broken for some reason. Uh, yeah, you need to eat. Um, we are recycling that. Let's take a turn. Take a turn. Wow, Tom randomly showing up is quite helpful. It's like the one proper... No! What? No! I... I fed him! I gave him food! I... You introduced yourself with confidence and tried to show off the power of human intellect by reciting the first few hundred digits of pi from memory. You did well, too well. The, the satellite replied with a short, ominous robot detected, prepared to die, then it went silent. I'm detecting a missile approaching us with high speed from the direction of the satellite. Captain, what have you done? Oh my code. To so how is the cause, cause of death starvation? I... I enjoy this game, but more and more I'm getting frustrated with it. Like, that... That was just a random event that killed me? But it said I died of starvation. It, oh, okay, okay. So there's 60 seconds, guys. I'm willing to play it again, but I think I'm gonna have to demand that you guys, uh, that you guys watch the video, basically. Like, if, the, if there's not enough interest in it, I'm not doing another one of this, um, because it's just getting frustrating at this point. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. This will probably be in a, f in a couple of parts, I think, because it went on for quite a long time. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, in the next one.